good morning and uh, welcome to camp. We're going to do a little bit of Bible study together today. So, um, this is Rufio. He's joining us this morning. Today, we're going to talk about a parable called the lost sheep. So first, I want to give you a little bit of background on um, what why Jesus was telling this story. There's always a reason and something that provokes the story. So let's talk about what happens just before these verses that we're going to read. So Jesus is um, spending his time and um, hanging out mostly with people that the the teachers, the Pharisees in the land, would not have spent any time with. People they would consider to be sinners for one reason or the other. Um, people who were not as wealthy as them. Um, people who had different kinds of diseases that they would have considered um, to make them a sinner. So, um, tax collectors also fit in that category and they just wouldn't have spent time with them and Jesus was doing that. So. It's got on their nerves, and so they decided to go question him and figure out what he was doing. And you know, sometimes when people ask you a question, you can tell like they don't really want the answer, they're just trying to call you out on something. Seems like that's probably what was happening here. So they come and they ask Jesus why he is hanging out with all of these sinners. Um, and so this, instead of just giving a straight answer, um, which they probably would have argued with more. Um, he told them a story so that they would have something to think about and ponder on. And uh, so I'm going to share that story with you. It uh, comes from Luke 15, chapters 4 through 6. So if you have your Bibles, um, you can grab those or you can get your activity books. We printed out the scripture in there as well, so you can grab that and read what we're going to be reading. Um, what we've printed in the books is, uh, and what I'm going to read is the ESV, English Standard Version. Whatever version you have should be fine and will make sense and sound at least similar to what this story's going to say. So, let's start with verse 4. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So let's think of something that you have that you value highly. Maybe write down your top three of those things and um, think about if something happened to one of those, would you be upset? What sort of links would you take to go and find whatever that thing that you value is? How would you go about finding it or saving it. There are a lot of things we could talk about in this Bible study. There's, in just these couple of short verses, there's just a lot that we can learn. Uh, I think there's a lot we can see about um, the type of sacrifices that Jesus is willing to make for us, um, for the love that he has for us. And then the second part um, that we're going to talk about today is just what does that mean for us? So Jesus has done this thing for us. What are we going to do with that? And how can we be um, a light for others in the same way? So I am guessing that most of you probably don't own a hundred sheep. I could be wrong, but um, you might not even know anyone who owns a hundred sheep. I don't think that I know anyone who owns a hundred sheep. So the story that um, 
Jesus is telling would have been a lot more relatable to people in his time because lots of people owned sheep. And even if the people he was talking to didn't own sheep, maybe they did. Um, but they knew people who owned sheep and they could understand the story. And they knew um, kind of what sheep were like. So usually um, sheep had a shepherd. Sometimes today we see dogs that are herding sheep. Um, but they need constant care and attention in order to stay together with the rest of their group. Um, and they need someone to, to look out for them uh, for different dangers that they might find themselves in. Um, and so we think about that as we're thinking about um, the sheep. So who do the sheep represent? I hate to jump straight in to that, but when Jesus is talking about the sheep, he's not just trying to teach them a lesson about sheep. Um, he's trying to teach them a lesson about people and about how to care for people and love people. So if we're thinking about the group of sheep, all a hundred of them, um, they represent people that God cares about, which we know to be all people. So the Pharisees, these are the smart teachers um, that were questioning Jesus. Um, they know that Jesus didn't really spend his, the majority of his time, um, today we would say preaching to the choir or just telling people who already know about God, about God. He wanted to tell people who maybe didn't know um, who God was, um, people who maybe didn't know they were loved, who felt outcast from the church. Um, and in the same way that um, when the shepherd in this story leaves his 99 sheep to find the lost sheep, Jesus is doing that too. He's leaving the 99. He's leaving the people who already know who God is and who understand God. And he's going to find the one who doesn't. Why do you think the sheep was lost? Well, the sheep, an actual sheep, um, likely was lost um, because it had just wandered away or maybe had got caught in a bramble. Could have been attacked by some wild animal. Um, but Jesus knew that if the sheep wasn't there, with the other 99, there's something wrong and um, that he needed to go and find them and find out. Maybe for you in this story, um, you find yourself in the group of the 99. Maybe you find yourself as the one and um, this story is a really important one to understand that Jesus cares about all of our individual needs and he'll go to great lengths to find you and to care for you, to give you the things that you need and to bring you back to the 99. Maybe bring you back because you've been there before. Maybe bring you to the 99 for the first time. Um, but he'll do what it takes to find you where you are. One of the really neat things that if you look close, you'll see that when, um, when the sheep is found, um, the reaction to the sheep being lost is interesting. I think we think um, that if we make a mistake, um, if we find ourselves lost, that, um, we're going to be ridiculed or maybe we're the ones doing the ridiculing whenever someone makes a mistake. Um, but that's not what Jesus is suggesting at all. Um, there's no judgment. There's no telling the sheep to, uh, that they're, that he's terrible for being lost. There's simply rejoicing. He rejoices, he's overcome with happiness. Um, he tells everyone how happy he is 
and on top of that, he puts the sheep on his shoulders meaning that he carries the sheep back. He doesn't say, all right, you've, you've had this hard time. Maybe you're caught in a bramble. Uh, maybe you're injured. And this injury could be for people versus the sheep. And I'm switching back and forth. Um, it could be just something terrible that's happened to you. It could just be that you're in a, a bad place, like mentally. Um, it could be bad health things going on um but he, he doesn't say you're gonna have to walk back we're going back and you're walking with me he just picks up the sheep just like he picks us up and carries us back that's a lot of love jesus loves us so much that he will come to us and understand with understanding with grace and whatever we're going through whatever good or bad decisions we've made he just wants to bring us close to him again i know some people feel like they've made mistakes that um would make jesus not want to do that but that's not the case and that's part of what this story is trying to tell as well that there's nothing that we could do that um would separate us from God's love, that he still will find us and will care for us and will carry us back when that's what we need. So because that's been done for us, what does that call us to do? It calls us to offer that same grace to other people. So Jesus may be asking us to go and share his love with others who need it. Uh, it may be one particular person. It might be a group of people who need some extra love from God. You know, maybe you've noticed some injustice in our society and you're called to leave your 99, your safe place, and speak out or physically go um, and, and call out how the one is being mistreated and bring the one back to the 99 in that way um you know maybe uh maybe you have friends who uh are not feeling loved you can remind them that you love them but most importantly you can remind them that god loves them so there's some questions so there's some reflection questions in your book I encourage you to find uh, a place, a quiet place, and some time. You can write in a journal you already have. You can use any blank space in this book to write some things down. If you have a journal, um, I encourage you to write, write it there. Um, so just think about how you've seen in your own life Jesus find you when you were feeling lost. Remind you of his love for you and his grace and his care and think about who you know that doesn't know how much Jesus loves them. Who do you know who knows Jesus but maybe needs a reminder? Are there any groups of people who could use extra love or reminders that they're important to God? And then think about one way you can share God's love with one or more people or groups of people that you wrote down in your reflection. Now, obviously, there are ways to do that safely during this time, so I encourage you to find a way um, to do that. Um, and then share those things with us. We would love to hear the ways that you're sharing God's love with other people, bringing them in and caring for them. And, um, yeah, we look forward to hearing those things from you. I'll talk to you soon.